What is up guys, it's Coach Cam and we are back today with a full body workout starting off here with push-ups. So this is to hit the chest, it's going to also hit your shoulders and triceps very hard. So I'm doing just body weight here, I don't have any added weight and this is just by choice. I've already done this in the past at a local outdoor park where I saw how it took me about 2 minutes and 20 seconds to reach failure. So I figured I would give it a go here in my garage on these parallettes. So the point of going slow, or the reason I'm going slow, is to reduce momentum and acceleration in my exercises. This way, the muscles have to perform every ounce of work that's being done. Watch how slowly I change directions here. Slowly change directions. So to come up, I just press with a little bit more force to bring the body up and then try not to lock out too hard this is uh an issue that i never thought of until i started training like this but some exercises when you fully lock out you stack the joints and that's not a problem but there's not really any muscles involved in doing so in a lot of exercises think of especially squats right if you lock out at the top of a squat, you're just standing there now. We can stand for days on end without rest because it doesn't use much muscle involvement. So try not to lock out too hard. You want it to be safe for your joints as well. Starting to get very difficult here. You can tell by uh, the shakiness in my arms as I'm going up and down. I only did about eight push-ups, but I was able to hit muscular failure which is the goal. So when you hit muscular failure, you stimulate all of your body's processes in terms of hypertrophy strength, cardiovascular, metabolic, and bone and tendon strengthening. This I did early in the morning, so I had not eaten yet. So I felt a little bit flat, honestly, but it was still very effective. And I still feel it today. I'm sore from, from the workout. That was push-ups so next is chin-ups here body weight once again moving very slowly you know i could have added weight but i don't know i like using less weight if possible i like getting more out of less weight so chin-ups here nice and slow another thing here is to not go down all the way to where you're fully extended because especially with how slow i'm moving if i go down all the way i'm going to be hanging there for like three seconds so there's not going to be any muscular tension there for three whole seconds which i don't want i want the muscles to suffer the language of muscles is fatigue okay remember that the language of muscles is fatigue so if you can fatigue them better doing a certain a routine a certain exercise a certain way that you perform it that is ultimately going to be more stimulatory in the long run it's at least going to save you time and reps right i could bang out 25 chin-ups but probably the first 20 of those it's just a waste of time because it's too easy whereas if you move slowly like this every ounce of movement every muscular contraction that's taking place is very intense on the body and it feels as if i'm doing this with 100 pounds at it even though i'm not so just getting more out of less weight next is seated overhead press i was surprised felt a little weak on this just because the push-ups were that intense um this is only 55 pounds so it's a five on each side of this bar moving it very slowly so also trying not to lock out too much at the top on this because like i said you stack the joints there's less muscular involvement on an exercise like this so moving nice and slow just trying to avoid momentum it's also safer right people think that if you train hard it's not safe and that's because they associate training hard with using heavy weight and with moving fast which they would be correct if you use heavy weight, you are putting more forces on to your joints and your connective tissues than if you use a lighter weight. Same thing with moving fast. If you move fast, you are putting more peak forces onto your connective tissues and joints, neither of which is required to stimulate the muscle. 
So we want to fatigue the target muscles, the muscles involved in the exercise. For this, it's triceps and shoulders. So I'm moving slowly here, starting to get fatigued, but you gotta stand your ground, you gotta keep going. You can't just stop because you're tired. You gotta make sure it's when your muscles fail. Last time I did a full body workout on my YouTube channel, it took me 26 minutes. This one took me longer than that. Um, I had a little bit more setup to do for um, a couple exercises. Right there was failure. Next here is body rows. I put a little wooden board out where my feet are to get me at a good angle and performing these nice and slow as well. So this is the same thing as a seated cable row, barbell row, any type of machine row it's it's all a row right your body doesn't care really what you did to um to, to stimulate that that movement in those muscles just the fact that you trained intensely so i like this exercise i've done this exercise for years usually i do it very fast um, but performing it slower just makes it so much harder for my muscles so i'm at um, about a 45 degree angle here Nice and slow, pull all the way through, change direction slowly. And my back is completely fried after one set of this. You know, people think, oh, you should be doing more volume. Well, try this, try this out. And if you do this form of training on every exercise, you will be fried. After every exercise, it will crush your muscles and you're gonna have to take days off because it's not gonna be worth training again. You have to let the body recover for you to train again optimally, right? Because when you train again, you're not just there to try to stimulate a little more muscle. You're there to progressively overload. You're there to do better than last time. How can you even come close to that if you're not even recovered yet from training? So this comes back to like the stimulus adaptation curve where right after the stimulus, you are fatigued, and then from there, as you recover, and then you adapt. You want to super compensate. So next is uh, cable curls. To be honest, I didn't even want to do this exercise. My biceps felt so fried from the first two that I was really hesitant on this. This is uh, 45 pounds on the uh, rack. I put less weight when I do compounds first because my biceps are weaker. I only got two reps, and that's just goes to show you how fried my arms were from the first two exercises i was very surprised i think next time if i feel like that i'm gonna have to skip the curls because i this lasted about 50 seconds so maybe it's better than nothing um but just nowhere near a progressive overload on this exercise after those first uh, several pulling movements next was tricep push downs and pretty much the same story so Nowhere near progressive overload. Uh, did about a minute on this before I hit failure. And I think it just speaks to the effectiveness of the first two pressing exercises, the push-ups and the barbell overhead press. So there are hit trainers that are under the idea that if you perform your compound lifts very intensely, that it also stimulates your arms very much, very close to optimal. And that is not something that I believe, but after this workout, I'm a little bit more of a believer than I was before because that's how fried those muscles were from the compound lifts that I did. Compound lifts certainly have a place in our uh, training and they are probably some of the best exercises to train your chest and back and then to also get uh, good stimulus on your arms. Next is lateral raises, dumbbells. This also did not progress. Once again, I shuffle my exercises and this, my adults were fatigued. What can I say? I already did overhead press, right? Overhead press probably targets your shoulders a little bit more than my usual dips. I usually do dips, but I'm sure the overhead press is a little bit more fatiguing on the delts specifically. It's important to go slow here, reduce momentum. It's not about how much weight you can move. It's not even about moving the weight. You can perform an isometric contraction. Everyone forgets about this contraction type. You don't have to move the weight. The 
That's the assumed objective of exercise. The assumed objective is to move the weight, right? To get reps in, that that's supposed to be the stimulus. When really, it's just contracting your muscles intensely against the resistance, which is often done just as, if not more effectively, when you move slower and expose the muscle to the full weight of the tension. This is an isometric quad extension that I do before I do squats, just to pre-fatigue the quads and hip flexors. The way I'm doing it on this bench, it also activates your abs a ton. So my abs are sore today from this. Just did one set to failure, it's about 45 seconds. And then I go into my squats after this. So I could use my quad extension attachment on my bench over here and just load up a few plates, but this is what I did previously in a body weight only exercise workout. So just had to try it out again and see if I could pre-fatigue the quads before I go into body weight only squats. So body weight only squats, this did take a while. It took about two and a half minutes to reach failure. That's longer than I usually train and I'm gonna have to add some weight. So I'll probably just hold one of my power block dumbbells next time or hold maybe like a 25 pound plate, something like that. Help me reach failure a bit earlier. With squats, you don't wanna go all the way up. And this is something that I did not understand at first and I kind of struggled with, but when you stand all the way up and stack the joints in a squat, there's no muscular tension on the muscles anymore. They get a break. So that's me still with my knees bent and then going back down. A lot of people that power lift and focus on the weight, focus on competing with other people, they will bounce out of the squat. They will drop down fast and bounce up as fast as they can. And that's how you're going to move the most weight. However, that is far inferior to stimulating your muscles. That is far inferior in terms of the stimulus. Those people could use a third of the weight on their back and move slower and get the same, if not far better stimulus for their leg muscles. So when I come up from the bottom of a squat here, start coming up very slowly and you'll feel a point where your glutes and quads just kick in. Right after I come up a few inches, it's like boom, everything flexes and they're very, very fatigued. You'll see when I finish this set, had to grab the safety bars next to me in order to walk away and not fall. <laughs> so squats is a really effective exercise. I found when I put the bar on my back that it shifts the tension more toward my glutes and hamstrings and away from my quads, which I don't want. I'd rather train more quads than, than glutes really. So this is me coming down nice and slow. A lot of tension here at the bottom I'm not resting coming back up you can see the my facial expressions it is intense a lot of my hip flexors quads glutes are on fire but this is my last rep here coming up almost fell grab the safeties next is calf raises this is with three plates I just take my dip stand that I use for dips set it on the ground and it makes a good height for calf raises and I use my weight belt my king of weighted weight belt to load up the plates um, I think I did about seven or eight reps here as well and I progressed by a few seconds so I'm happy with that you know with the weeks now that I am I'm training in the fire Academy there's a lot more movement a lot more activity that I'm performing than I used to, right? I used to take a week off between workouts or close to a week, but I also was not as stressed or as active. Now I'm more active, so I have to take that into account when I come into these workouts. You know, what are the expectations? Am I really gonna blow it up every every time and make like insane progress? Or is my body always under a little bit of stress, a little bit of fatigue, kind of that real world situation, right? Because if I was a firefighter in the future, the rest of my life, I'm never going to be like feeling 100% recovered because I'm going to be lacking sleep, right? I'm going to be working up late. So 
this may be the best time I'll ever have in terms of recovery and for training. So I'm trying to do my best to be as fit as possible, prepare myself for the future. Here is my little flex video I do at the end. About the same body weight, same height, obviously, 5'7", 165-ish. Um, it was 35 degrees, so I had to wear long sleeves, long pants in my garage. Um, but, you know, this was a workout. It was a good workout, very effective. I at first didn't feel very sore or anything, but today, the next day, I do feel sore. And I, I see the it was very uh, worth doing, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, share, subscribe for more. See you guys in the next one.